Jeff, I think you have a question tonight, though, because, mm, mm, yeah, it's been a week, hasn't it? Uh, what's in a blue check? Mm, is that the question? What defines conspiracy theories? Mm. What makes your blackness more palatable to the elite? Mm. No, but, um, no, but it, yeah, it, it, it has been... It has been a weekend. It was a weekend, I will say. Um, for those of you who haven't been keeping up with uh, Black Twitter news, um, there was a dead gentleman, I believe his name is DJ Chubb Swag. DJ Chubby Swag. Chubby Chubb Swag, right? H-U? Right, right, right. So long story short, he came to find out, I don't know how, but he came to the revelation that um, a white woman was curating hip hop at the colloquially known as Black Sony in the, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And he uh, proceeded to inquire on Twitter, who let this happen? Why is a white woman curating hip hop? What happened next was probably, and I'm not trying to use hyperbole, but me thinking really, like really thinking back, probably one of the worst days in the history of quote unquote black Twitter, where he got attacked by a lot of people who either felt the need to speak out when nobody asked them or had personal relationships with the person who, who was in question um, and really attacked them as if his, his point wasn't valid. And it was it was crazy. It was a it was a lot. And every type of war that you could think of between like the popular versus the not popular, the people, the un, the verified hashtag, the verifieds versus the unverified, the uh, the 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 bourgeoisie versus the every man. Like it, it seemed to all come to a head at the same point, uh, to the point where. Eventually, you know, people backlashed at at those groups for for condemning him for asking. What they felt like it was a valid question, and they all started apologizing. And it was just it was just a lot. And we've talked about it offline. And so many people have had commentary. And, and you know, as we always say, if something is going on and we don't, we were not going to act like it's not happening. Um, that's why we put it in guac just to give our like overall thoughts. I don't think we need to go into a great debate. Whatever has happened has happened. Uh, Ben, I, I think for me, there's a, there's a line that I've, I've used. It's a variation. And I think it it's, it's a couple of things for me. One, I would say think twice, tweet once mm -hmm. because nowadays some, some people have to come to the realization that this is not 2009 anymore. This is not 2009 Twitter. This is not 2010 Twitter. Corporate money is in Twitter. To social media is a business. So what you say can and will be used against you. People will judge you. This isn't like the old days where you get fried for a day and then everybody would go back to normal. Like this is as much of your brand reputation as possible. So if you're really trying to inject yourself in something, think twice before you tweet. The second thing I would say is, Know your range. If mm. you're not really about hip hop like that, if you're not in these spaces, if you don't really have an informed opinion, you don't really got to speak on everything. You don't got to speak on everything, especially when it's people involved that you know and their, their livelihoods, their lives aren't really on the line. When you inject yourself in these type of conversations, it's either you got to be 100% on point or just learn how to like <laughs> keep it silent because that's when you get people apologizing and saying they messed up because you're, you're tweeting out of emotion. That's also the first rule of Twitter. Don't react. That's yeah. been the first rule of Twitter. Do not react because when you react, nothing good happens. Nothing yeah. good. Even when it's good, nothing good happens. So that's really at a high level what I would say about the situation. Mm. Me at a somewhat high level too. I really just found fault with the situation because I feel like we become a very toxic environment in general. I feel like because of this president, because of the things that have been said, because of this energy that kind of pervades the nation right now, we just, and Twitter, especially black Twitter has always been about snarkiness, about the jokes, 
about bam, 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 or something happened. Okay, how fast can I make this joke about it? How mm -hmm. fast can I throw my opinion in on it? And I've gotten kind of tired of it because I feel like there's a lot of us in this space who, when we start seeing someone else popping that's in our same space, we get jealous or we feel like that person did something to get there to where they don't deserve it. And this might be the case. But like I always say, one thing I always, you know, try and do in my own life is to ignore what everyone else is doing. Like even back when I was saying we're the only geek podcast of, you know, where you can find geek culture from the perspective of people of color. I did it one because it was a joke from an invincible comic book that they where they said they're only superhero comic. And also because that's just my mentality where I just don't think about what everyone else is doing. I have a lot of respect for what I see other people doing. And when people are really doing something dope, I want to get better at what I'm doing so I can reach that level. But I just really don't think about what other people are doing. And I don't really try and just I feel like a lot of people are, were waiting to hate on people, you know, or just because they had a personal beef with them that they couldn't express when things like this happened, they started attacking. I understand a lot of people said a lot of stupid things though this weekend and that happens. So that was my just bigger take on it is like you said, it's not something I really want to dwell on. Everything's been said, you know, uh, it's just one of them things, man. I, you know, I hope this, I mean, I really don't hope there's no way hoping for this. <laughs> I just, you know, I just hope that, you know, people really start, realizing that there's enough for everyone out here that's one thing i want to say is that there's enough for everyone we live in a world of abundance you know you create your own world what you eat don't make another person shit you know and what they eat don't make you shit so it's like don't worry about what other people are doing worry about what you're doing continue to be the best at what you're doing and everything else will fall into place that's something that i've had to focus on myself and this weekend made me realize that even more so thank y'all for that what do you think about uh, some, there are some users who were saying that the the verified check should be abolished or there should be a system. I, where, I, wait, hold on. I'm yeah. just, I'll, I'll give you the whole thing. There would, there should be a system where um, who, depending on who you are for verification, there should be different types of checks. So like journalists should get one check. So let me <laughs> get one check. <laughs> Uh, public figures get another check or whatever the case may be. I'll give you my take. I'll give you my take first, and then um, I'll let you. Well, no, I mean, you give me your take, and then I'll give you mine. I think that's the most laughable thing I've heard in a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that once again, we let white supremacy just create ways to patriarchal white supremacy at that. Let me make it straight to create ways to divide us. Like, you are really giving this blue check weight and Twitter way too much thought. If you need all of that, all the blue check means is the person is who they say there is. It's not a fake account. That's all it means. So if you're not a fake account without a blue check on your name, that means you're verified. Yeah. And, and here, here's, what I, <laughs> here's what I'll say about it. Here, here's, a, here's something that I will say about that whole situation. One, I think the users have to take fault for bestowing prestige on the blue check <laughs> and claiming that they don't know what it's about. And I saw somebody say Twitter isn't clear. If you go and you do a <laughs> course of what the verification badge means, this is what it means. And Ben said it. I'll reinforce. It means I am who I say I am when I'm tweeting. It does not say what I'm saying is the authority on what I'm tweeting, which means I could be me tweeting bullshit, but it's me though. It's yeah. definitely me. And Man, I think what's happened, on. what I think what's happened is that celebrity culture has helped to conflate verification with a status symbol. So when people are verified, you know, the non celebrity, non celebrity, um, non public figure users because I don't want to call anybody normal or regular because I feel like that's derogatory because we're all regular people. We're all people. So if you're either a celebrity or you're not, right? Non-celebrity, non-public figure. You look at those people and you're like, all right, they have a certain status. So what is it that they have that I don't? They might have more money than me. They have my more items. So you see that check and you're like, okay, well, they have that check. So that must mean that what they're that they're somebody important. So if they're somebody important, then that check means their word has a higher 
level of prestige and a higher level of clout. Let me use let me use that buzzword of 2018. A higher level of clout than somebody else. And no, 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 it isn't. It isn't. And and yes, call me what you want because I'm biased. Because yes, I do have a blue check. I will say at times that shit feels like a scarlet letter because. Oh my I can't God. tweet the uh, way I want to tweet anymore that, because that, I say one thing and people go to the verified list and it's like, oh, this dude. Yo, you don't know how many times I made a Hotep joke with one of my mans. Not even killing Hoteps. I made a Hotep joke. And Hotep Twitter, I was the verified blah, 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 blah. And then when I got to start saying, yo, this check don't make me. I see your location. You where I'm at, what up? Then it's like, oh, this dude different. Yeah, because the, the check doesn't make me. Maybe it makes other people. It don't make me. And that's something that people, I think what you were saying before about the jealousy about I'm here and you're there. If you can't discern the difference and you really think that that gives people that type of clout, so much so that you would want to kill blue checks and, and install a blue check hierarchy or a check system. Oh, my God. Um, like, what's yeah. wrong with you? Yeah, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just feel like we're giving this way too much thought than is necessary. I, I especially I feel for like listeners of this show. I feel like they should know that by now. But if you don't, celebrity means nothing. You know, being someone who you see on TV does not make you intelligent. Being someone with a blue check does not make you wise. These things mean nothing. And Ben they is a celebrity, so he's telling you. And they are irrelevant. <laughs> it is all Ben Hameen, bro. I say all kind of idiotic stuff all the time. You know, but my main thing to take away from this is stop with this hating. Stop. Like, I understand being snarky, having jokes. Everyone wants to be a comedian. Everyone's got that, you know, boom, they get off. But we got to chill. Like, that stuff is tired. We have much bigger issues than to sit around worrying about a hierarchy of blue checks. Oh, my God. Lord, no more worse. jokes on Twitter? I mean, it's not about jokes on Twitter, but it's about like when you're making jokes about people, that's something that bothers me, really. You know, it, it's understandable. OK, it's like, you know, F our president. I'll make a joke about him all day. That dude's a Ooh. scumbag. You know what I mean? But there's like these are people who are living lives, mm -hmm. you know, who have children, who have families, who have mothers and fathers, who have sisters and brothers. And it's like we just sit there and attack people. And that bugs me out, yo. That is so crazy. And that mob mentality at Twitter, when you see one of your people who's popular jumping on somebody and you sit there and hit the like button. Like, what is that about, yo? We really have to examine what this technology does to our lives, what it does to communication, what it does to us as people. You know, we're, like, we're being put into an experiment with technology like this. And we just accept it and use it. And it's really doing something to the way that we're approaching each other. And that is bugging me out more and more these days. I think it, I, I think it actually amplifies stuff that's already been there. I mean, we've been in high school. We've been in high school lunchrooms. We've been in places where people are like that. It's just, but this it's is putting a, it's just putting a, it's just magnified because the technology makes it easier to be. There's, 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 that's what I'm saying though. There's nothing that you can compare that to in previous history. There was no time in previous history where you could walk out in the street, say a thought, and millions of people could potentially hear you, and millions of people could potentially respond to you. Right. That's why I said it's amplified. It's amplified yeah, but another that, level. That, that's you know. simplifying it too much of what I'm saying. Just saying that it's amplified is one. No, it's not more. simplified. It's it's not simplified. I'm saying. Though, if you, I, I'm saying what you're saying, yeah, yeah, like I'm not, I'm not simplifying. I'm just saying back in the day, I could go in my fucking carriage, or my people wouldn't be on carriages, but you know, the white people would be on carriages and, and hark in the country square, and a few hundred people would hear them. Now, millions of people, it's projected because the, the technology amplifies it to an nth level, and we yeah. are at the peak of communication, but you know. I, I, I'm someone who grew up in the technology technology era, and God bless the kids that are growing up in this because, woo, if you if I grew up with social media like this, the way y'all cutting ass, you gotta come, you better come to school with a whole list of jokes and and like be tooled up because shit is tight out there, man. But see that that's what I'm saying. I grew up in like all of us grew up in a technology area era, but what like people this. don't realize. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. What people don't realize is the advancement of technology is so different these days. And it's like, boom, here's a new one. Here's social media. You know, here's this, here's that. But, you know, we'll get to other stuff. That's really 
you know, we talk about tech and all this. We don't have our tech queen here tonight, so we'll save this for tech another time. Tatiana. You know, 